Hey, well, we've been in this Advent series and the word Advent means uh, arrival or coming. So we've spent the last three weeks uh, talking about Advent in red letters, meaning we wanted to hear uh, from Jesus uh, why he came to this earth, uh, what was the purpose. And we began our Advent series with the title of Jesus came to do the will of the Father. You'll see this quote on the screen here. Uh, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the father who sent me. All that he has given me, I should lose none. You might remember that Jesus also said, no one can uh, come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. So if you're a follower of Jesus, what has happened is God, the father has drawn you to his son, Jesus. And then the next week after that, we talked about Jesus said that he is a light into the world. He says this in John chapter 8. Then Jesus spoke and said that I am a light to the world. He who follows me shall never walk in darkness. So Jesus, as we are following him, as followers of him, we're never going to walk in darkness. We're going to have this light of life. Then last Sunday, we talked about Jesus came to seek and save the lost. We talked about the prodigal son. If you missed that message, you definitely want to uh, listen to it and check it out and send it to maybe you've got a few prodigals in your life. Well, today we're going to be in John uh, chapter 18 as we talk about uh, truth, that Jesus has come to bear witness of uh, the truth. Now, truth has been on the stand for a little while in our country, hasn't it? Depending on what uh, news station you watch, these guys are saying they're talking truth. These guys are saying those guys are giving some fake news. Uh, Truth is extremely uh, important, family, as we're going to talk about today. Now, what's wonderful about truth is that there's not one person in here that doesn't love truth. Let me explain it to you like this. Maybe you're having a, a disagreement or an argument with somebody and Um, you're exchanging some words and they say something to you and your response is, well, that's, that's not truth. That's not the truth. So all of us want truth. Sometimes we want truth only when it suits us. Um, Those of us that have little kids or have had little kids or little, um, or have grandkids, the truth is important to us so much. So we tell our kids things like this. Now tell me the truth. We've all had this. Un- we've all understand this. Now, now tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. No, tell me the, the truth. We've never told our kids or grandkids, tell me what you think I need to hear. <laughs> no. We would say, tell me the truth and don't you lie. Since the truth is important to all of us, sometimes family, you and I are selective with truth. We expect truth from everybody And when we don't get it, we get upset. But then when God gives us truth, we're like, "Mm, I'm not sure if I want that truth. Today in our text, Jesus is having a conversation with a man named uh, Pontius Pilate. So Pilate has the authority to free Jesus or to crucify him. So Pilate and Jesus are having a conversation and you and I are going to pick up on this conversation found in John uh, chapter 18. John chapter 18. And when you get there, give us an amen. amen. And if you're new to reading your Bibles, good. There should be one in front of you. John is towards the end of your Bible in what's called the gospel. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then the book of John. You're looking for the number 18. And then the small little verses, um, small little numbers are the verses. John chapter 18. We're going to look at verse 33. When you get there, give us an amen. amen. And if you need some help finding John, just look, ask one of your neighbors. And it's good to bring your Bibles or to read through, or read along with us so you can make sure that nobody's making anything up. Amen. amen. Take everybody verse by verse through the Bible. That's a good thing. John chapter 18, starting at verse 33, it says this. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priest have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. 
If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Listen to Pilate's question. A Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the what? To the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears what? My voice. My voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. And the church said, amen. amen. Hey, if you are a note taker this morning, you want to take, out, take down a couple of things that the Lord will reveal to you. The first point we're going to talk about is Jesus is a king and has a kingdom. Jesus is a king and has a kingdom. I'm certain that you've seen all of the Christmas cards and there's a, a baby lion in a manger. And uh, I saw my wife's Facebook and somebody sent her something that says when it showed a, a baby in a manger, it says, this is the first king size bed. I was like, that's good. I was like, eh, that, that'll work. That, that'll work. So we learn here from our text that Jesus is a king and that he has a kingdom, that Jesus is worshiped by the entire a host of heaven. He's adored. He's loved. And so wonderful is that we get a, a small glimpse of how Jesus is worshiped in Luke chapter 2. And this is the, the Christmas story if, you, if you've not read it. But Luke chapter 2 gives us a little insight into the worship of Jesus. And it says this in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. It says, And uh, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a what? Savior. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Listen to verse 13. So glorious. It says, Then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace, goodwill towards men. This host of heaven shows up and they can't help but to worship. They can't help but to say glory to God in the highest that their king has been born into this world. Now, what's so beautiful about Luke chapter 2, verse 11, it says, unto this day, it doesn't say a politician was born because that won't save us. That's for sure. <laughs> for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior, someone to save you and I. Now, the beautiful thing is, none of us ask for a savior. None of us ask for a savior to come into this world, to be born this, the, the way, uh, to, to come into uh, the world. None of us have asked for that. But God the Father knew what you and I needed most. He knew that we needed a savior, somebody to save us to save us from our sins, uh, to save us from the things of this world, to save us and to give us this, this peace and this joy and to, to save us from, from hopelessness. Family, if, family and friends, if, if you're here today, friend, and you're, you're not religious at all, you will understand this example. We are the freest country on the planet. Right? Right, right? Do whatever we want. Have as much of whatever we want. You want to smoke, you can smoke. The hippie lettuce, you know, if you, if you, if you want to do drugs, they'll, they'll give you needles. You can do whatever you want, literally. Why is there so much hopelessness? If freedom brings hope, we, we've got freedom. We've got, we've got freedom down. But yet we're without hope. We can do whatever we want. Why isn't the entire, why, why isn't our, our, our world, our, let's bring it back to California. Why isn't there a bunch of rejoicing? You're free. Do whatever you want. There, there, there's, there's more hopelessness 
today in 2023 than there's ever been. We're more free today, but yet there's more hopelessness. Jesus has come to set us free and to, to give us hope, to, to, to deliver us from destruction, from lies, from, from our sins. And family, if, if we're not careful, we're going to live a life apart from Jesus, just trying to pursue these things. Now, you might say, well, pastor, man, this all sounds nice, but I don't, I don't really need saving. That's the problem right there, that we don't always recognize our need. We don't always recognize what's good for us and what's bad for us. And sometimes we know what's bad for us and we still partake of it. Uh, praise the Lord, you guys have been giving some, your, your pastor man some, 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 some cookies lately. And I don't know who did it, but the little white ones, the powdered ones, dang. Right? Popping those like Tic Tacs, right? Some may not make it all the way home to my house. I know it's bad for me, but I want it anyway. You know how you get really spiritual when you get down to the bottom of something? Is it, is it just me? I feel so alone, right? You work your way to the bottom of something, and there's like two left, and you say something like, okay, I'll save it for later. But then if we're to be honest, something in me says, go ahead and finish the rest of it. That's my sin nature. Jesus, help me. Jesus has come to save us from ourselves. If he doesn't save us from ourselves, we have this capacity to destroy ourselves. Over and over and over and over again, we have this capacity. We've demonstrated that we need some saving. Listen to, to verse 38. Jesus says, For this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Our second point uh, this morning is Jesus is the truth we are all seeking and needing. Jesus is the truth we are all seeking and, and needing. Family and friends, uh, truth is paramount uh, to Jesus. We can clearly see in our world today there are truth problems. Someone might say, hey, as you're telling them about Jesus, well, you know what? You live your own truth. That's just, that's just not my truth. What they're saying is uh, truth is subjective, meaning that, hey, you do you, I do me. You do your truth and I do my truth. Well, family, you and I should live by what's called objective truth. What is objective truth? Objective truth is something which is true for all people anywhere, regardless of anything. I've used this example uh, before. So here is a key to my car. There is many of you that I have never seen before in my entire life. Don't know your name. Don't know your name. I can hand you, complete stranger, this key my car is black. It's in the south part of the parking lot. If you can drive a stick shift, you may have it, right? So I can hand this to you. I don't know you. You don't know me. But what I'm telling you is this key will work for anybody. Not met yet. Here you go. Young person, older person, take this key, find a black car. It'll open the door for you and it will start for you. And if you can drive a stick, you're doing really, really good, right? We could send this key to Tibet, right? Fly someone from Tibet here to California, Palm Springs International, bring them here, hand them this. It's going to work for whomever. This is called objective truth. It works for everybody, no matter who you are, where you've been, young, old, rich, educated, not educated. This will work for everybody and anybody. What's greater than this is this. Jesus works for everybody. Everybody. Jesus works for. Now you might say, well, Pastor, man, I know a whole bunch of people that used to walk with Jesus and are no longer walking with him. If Jesus works for everybody, what happened with them? Jesus worked for them too. They just didn't want to follow Jesus according to the way he wants to be followed. Jesus says, you want to follow me? Take up your cross. 
if you want to come after me, forsake everything and come follow me. So after, as you know, we know what it's like when you first get saved. Malls are busy. Jesus, it would be nice if we get a parking spot. And he goes, zing. <laughs> You're going, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> Lord, look at all these, look at all these red lights. It'd be nice if you made them green. Zing. You're like, oh my goodness. Then somewhere on your journey, no more parking spaces, no more red light, no more uh, green lights, no more random checks in the mail. He says, all right, it's time for you to start living by faith now. And then something happened to where you're like, mm, maybe not. Jesus works for everybody. Everybody just doesn't follow Jesus. Jesus is the truth that you and I are seeking and needing. How do we know this? Uh, many of us have, uh, have lived a life without Jesus. Oh, I want to be happy. Okay, and happiness, hey, that's great. So I'll, if I just made more money. Okay, so you make more money. I'm not happy. Ooh, I don't know what. I'll get married. That'll make me happy. There, there's some joy in that. <laughs> although, although my wife told me I put the toilet paper on the roll the wrong way. <laughs> I'm going, I don't think that really matters. Some of you are like, yes, it does. Right? God bless you. Right? So, oh, I know what. I'm, I'm still not happy. Let's have some kids. Oh, they're breaking everything now. They're wanting all of these things. Oh, you know what? I'm still not happy. Let me get a truck. <laughs> You've got your truck. You're cutting people off. You're parking on curbs. You're doing all these. Oh, I'm still not happy. It's, it's cyclical, family. What you're really searching for is Jesus. Because having things will never fulfill you. Having things means you had to keep coming back for it. You know what it's like. Uh, imagine some of your, if you, you get a new car, you get a, a new uh, car that's new to you. You take it to one of the stores up here. All of a sudden, somebody hits your door. You're like, and some of you love your car so much, you take up two parking spaces. <laughs> all right, all right. You're not playing around because that's your precious, right? Right, right? And, all, and again, there's nothing wrong with having things, but be careful that those things don't have you, right? Uh, be, be, be careful, family, that, that, that you're not using these, uh, these things as your pursuit of, of trying to find truth, uh, of trying to find hope that, 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 that Jesus is the truth that you and I, that you and I need. So there's times when we, we, we tell people about Jesus, no, 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 I'm, that's just not for me. Well, truth is not for you. Maybe this has happened to you or somebody you know. Maybe you're in a relationship and you're hanging out, you're watching TV or something, all of a sudden their, their cell phone, beep. You're still watching TV and they're just, you're like, hey, who was that? Don't worry about it. You're like, well, I'm not worried about it, but who was that? Yeah, don't worry about it. You want truth. You want them to tell you the truth. <laughs> if, you, if you own a company or if you have employees, you want them to live by truth. You want them to clock in on time, take a half hour lunch. <laughs> right, right. You and I want this thing called, this thing called truth that none of us can live our own truth. You'll see this quote on the screen here. We cannot create our own truth. Truth outdates us all. Truth outdates us all. You can't live your truth and I can't live my truth. We need to live the truth. And when you and I live the truth, it's not like God says, hey, I want you to spend all your time on the planet miserable. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. Or don't, and you definitely can't laugh. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more what? Abundant. abundant. God wants you and I to have an abundant life. How great is that that God is not some cosmic killjoy? But yet truth. is something that our country has a problem with. What's 
What's the truth? Family, truth is a beautiful thing. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Set you free. So the purpose of the truth is freedom. The purpose of the truth isn't to beat you down. The purpose of the truth isn't to say, well, you can't do this, this, and this, and this. No, the purpose of the truth is to set you free. So when Jesus says you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free, he's letting us know that, hey, I got some truth for you. Now, it, it may hurt a little bit, but hurt me to set me free, right? If you need to, to say something and it might cause me to feel a certain way, ask yourself, is it truth? Now, of course, we shouldn't use truth as a hammer, but truth is a beautiful thing. When we know that Jesus loves us the most and has the best plan for our lives, if he tells us something, it's not like he's trying to keep us from having joy or having a great life. He's trying to keep us from destroying ourselves. Those of you that, that, got, that have little, little kids, hey, play in the front yard. If the ball goes in the street, call me and I'll go get it for you. They're going, man, I can't have any fun in the front yard anymore. Ball's going in the street. I'm not going to wait for, for dad. I'm not going to wait for mom. Here comes a car. Zing. Then we, hey, 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 hey. You're not keeping them from something. You're not keeping them from fun. You're trying to keep them safe. So the truth is, when I tell you something, the purpose is for you to work in this, in this, uh, this area that I've revealed to you that you might have a great time. Hey, in the front yard, have a phenomenal time. Do whatever you want. But be careful of going out of the yard because it's not safe out there. So when the Lord tells us his truth, it may, it may hurt, but it's purpose to set free. We all understand this. There's been a time or two, maybe you've had a, a discussion with somebody and you've always known the truth, but you're one of those friends that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. But there has come a time when you said, okay, do you really want to know the truth? Anybody ever said that? Yeah. Anybody ever come love you? What you're saying is <laughs> you didn't really tell him everything along the way, but now you are at the point where you're like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do you really want to know the truth? The answer is yes. The problem is you were afraid to, to hurt them. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of what? Of a friend. The truth is a beauty. Who doesn't want truth? It's like saying, hey, lie to me. <laughs> don't tell me the truth. Don't, just, just lie to me. I, 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 just want, I don't want to know the truth. Just, just, just lie to me. It makes me feel better. And that's why maybe you're not free because you're not a lover of, of truth. We, we need truth, family. Truth is a, is a beautiful thing. Ask yourself this. Am I currently believing a lie about myself right now? Maybe some of you have had an argument sometime in the past. Somebody has said something about you, said something to you, and you've, you've held on to that. And for some of you, it's been decades are you currently believing a lie about yourself? Maybe somebody said you'll never be good. Uh, you, are, uh, you are unfit to love. Your life is always going to be this, this, and this, and this. You're always going to be an alcoholic. You're always going to be a drug addict. You're always going to be this. You're always going to be that. How many of you are still believing what someone else said about you that was a lie? But then here comes, here comes the truth. What will you choose? Will you choose the truth of God's word? Or will you choose the lies of someone of what they said about you? This is where the, the rubber meets the road. Where from Genesis to Revelation, this is, this is complete truth. But truth will cost you something if you follow it. Truth will cost you something if you follow it. But that's a good thing. That you and I can walk in the truth of Jesus. But truth today in our world, it's, uh, it's a little tough, isn't it? Truth today, no one wants to, people want to argue about Genesis. Hey, in the beginning, God created male and female. Family, in the history of civilization, when has anyone ever been confused about this? This is truth from God's word. So we have an opportunity to receive all of God's truth. Now, you, you might say, well, 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 pastor, man, that's something different. No, family, truth is truth. We can't say, I want this truth, but not this truth. <laughs> it's like just reading all of the Psalms and saying, okay, I know everything. 
right? No, we need to get to the Gospels where Jesus is laying out his truth. And how wonderful that truth's purpose is to bring illumination. It's to, it's to set free. And what if I told you today that no matter what lies people have told you that you're always going to be this, you're always going to struggle with this, this will always happen in your life. What if I was to tell you that Jesus says if you abide in him and he abides in you and his words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it'll be done unto you. That if you abide in Jesus, your life is going to blossom and grow. This is, this is the truth. But the Bible says that the God of this age has blinded the eyes of those who, who don't believe. Look at our world today. Young people, older people. Where's all the hope? Many of you that are older, remember on Saturday morning what we used to do? Wake up. If you had a mom like me, she says, don't come back. <laughs> Until when? The street light came on. I don't care where you go, you just can't be here. I don't want to see you until the street light comes on. You know what we did? We packed up some bologna sandwiches, right? Yeah. We had those little, little, mo uh, uh, little, uh, uh, apple, a little apple, little thing in a little can, had a little bag, a little juice, yeah, 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 yeah. We rode our bikes without helmets everywhere. No cell phone, no parental guidance. Our parents said, I don't want to see you. Just, just, just go. And you know what? We had some joy. I mean, those, those were some glorious days. Look at young people today. Depressed. You go to the CDC and, 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 and type in um, depression among, amongst young people. Out of bounds. Kids this old checking out of life. When we were 10, we had a phenomenal life. We had nothing to worry about. Uh, our, our playground was on top of asphalt, yeah. right? <laughs> there was no wood chips. There was no rubber stuff. There was no hand sanitizer. And some of you come from an era where there were no seatbelts in your car. Yeah. Some of us come from a time we used to ride in the back of a truck yeah. on the freeway. That's why we're crazy now. Right, 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 right. But look at our world today. We have the truth of Jesus, but when it's rejected, this generation of young people depressed. There was a time when TV went off. There was a time when there's no social media. Now, and, and, and you, some of you young ladies, you guys have it hard because you, you, you look on social media and you see beautiful pictures of, of filtered people and go, I want to be like that. That's not the truth. You ever see somebody without makeup? <laughs> Company I used to work for. Hopefully she'll never see this. <laughs> <laughs> Did her thing, right? One day she... Came into work. And you know how like you, you're, you're like, Jesus help me. <laughs> you know how you're a little surprised and you just kind of stare and you're just. <laughs> you're just okay. My point is that not everything is real. Some of you are depressed by stuff that's not real. You're chasing after something that's not real. Jesus is real. Follow Jesus. He is the one. He is the one that will set you free. He is the one family that will give us this peace and, and this joy that we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, pursuing. Uh, what Solomon says, like a chasing after the wind. Be careful of pursuing things that are, that are really temporal, temporal and temporary, right? Uh, my friend and I, we went, to, uh, we went to the dump here in Beaumont. Uh, was it last week? I think it was last week. It was kind of cool, to be completely honest with you. So we, 
We waited in line. We had to put on our little orange vest and we, uh, they took our money from us. We had to pay them to take our junk. Right? That's a whole nother message. Right? So, so we, we, we get to the dump. We, we drive up a hill and, and my friend said we're going to, I guess, a special place. So we go there and as we crest the hill, I'm like, this is kind of cool. These big old tractors were running over everybody's stuff. And I'm going, we're like literally, our, our, our truck is, 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 is on top of somebody else's junk. The things that we once spent some good money on, they're now in the back of this truck and I had to pay somebody to take my junk that I once I spent some money on. It's like everything ends at the dump. Everything ends at the dump. The seagulls are happy. I mean, if you've never gone to the dump, I mean, just, just go just for a field trip. And, and you're going to go and go, dang, this is kind of cool. There's just, there's just mounds of trash and tractors, but then they'll put all your stuff eventually underground and they'll just keep stacking up and stacking up. And I mean, when my friend and I were there, I'm going, this is crazy. All of the things that it's like I had a flashback to a store. Yeah, that'd be some nice furniture for our house. That would be nice for our house. Ooh, that would be nice for our house. Yeah. Hey, can you come and help us move all of our junk? Were we chasing after the wrong things? We're, 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 we're buying these things and, and hoping that it will make us maybe feel a certain way. And again, don't get me wrong. Have your stuff. Just make sure your stuff doesn't have you. Just that... Everything ended up at the dump. I'm going, we used to love that couch. We used to love that chair. It all end up, ended up in the dump. Be careful that all your pursuits don't end up in the dump. Be careful that all your strivings after things doesn't end up in the dump. You know how it, what it's like. Maybe some of you ladies, you're, 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 you're wanting to throw away some stuff and then those guys come along and say, hey, I'm going to take that. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> right, right, right? No, we're keeping this. What, what, what's, what's being said is this has value and worth. Family, may your faith have value and worth. We can throw away everything, but we're keeping us some Jesus. We can throw away all the furniture, throw away all the junk, all the things in the garage, but we are keeping us some Jesus. Jesus is our pursuit. He is our peace and he is our joy. Truth came into these ears and our hearts said, yeah, 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 yeah. This is glorious. Listen to the, the rest of the message. Uh, the next verse says, Jesus says, everyone who is of the truth, it says, here's, here's my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? Our last point uh, this morning is a seeker of truth hears truth. A seeker of truth hears truth. Uh, family and friends, truth is important. And is your, is your life built upon God's truth or your own truth? If our lives are built upon God's truth, then we're completely free because God knows everything about you and I and he still has given us Jesus. Imagine this. What if we threw your sins from this week on this screen right now? That would be truth. You've done this. Does it change the way you feel about one another? For most, it'd be like, yeah, dang. God sees and knows our truth, knows what we've done. And the truth of the matter is, that if we confess our sins before him, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's, that's truth found in his word. And that's why when we're going through something difficult, maybe you're, you're, you're riddled with anxiety, David said, quiet the multitude of anxieties within me. Uh, the, the Bible says, he that has begun a good work will be faithful to complete it. These are all uh, God's truth. Now, if you and I are selective with truth, you might say, well, 
I receive that God forgives me, but I don't want to receive when he says, hey, that I must decrease, that, that I must decrease and he must increase. I must take up my cross and follow him. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I like this part of truth, but not this part of truth. Family, let's you and I be, be lovers of all truth. And the truth may hurt, but hurt me to heal me, right? Yeah. Hurt me to heal me. Hurt me to, to set me free. Tell me, tell me the truth that I might, that I might live, that I might have, have hope and that I, that I might have a, have a future. And, and family, may, may truth resonate in you. May, may you and I hear truth regardless of the vehicle and say, yeah, uh, that's truth. Uh, for instance, there, there's a little baby right now. The parents are attuned to that baby's voice. We, we're like, who's somebody's baby, right? But if your baby was a cry, we could have a room full of babies that were yours and you'd be able to hear your baby's voice. Why? Because you know it. You know it. You, your, your, your ears are, are tuned in to their cry. May you and I be tuned in to all of God's truth. All of it in, in, in totality. Even when he asks something hard of us, the Lord will never ask something hard of us and have us do it in our own strength. Whatever he asks us, he will empower us to do it. And the sad thing is, he has provided this great life for all of us. Not that it's without pain, but he says, I'll walk with you. And sometimes we're like, well, this is maybe where we, where we part ways. May you and I never want something more than we want Jesus. So like this, may we never want something more than we want. May we never want something more than what Jesus wants for us. And Jesus, uh, when, when, when we feel that way, May, 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 may my, 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 my heart and my desire want what you want for me. I'm not sure about you, but there's a few times when I've wanted what I wanted, when I've wanted it. Didn't work out too well. Jesus, I want what you want for me when you want to give it to me. Because just maybe I'm not ready. Just maybe we're not ready sometimes for what God wants to give us. So he's preparing us. He's taking us through. He's guiding us and he's directing us. Jesus says those who, who are of the truth, they, they hear the truth. And what a wonderful statement to Pilate. Hey, Pilate, if you, if you want to know truth, you got to be able to hear it. You can't have this selective truth. The truth is, you and I are sinners, but we're loved by God. That's the truth. We are, we are destitute without Jesus, but he still loves people like you and me. How do we know? Listen to what the Bible says in Luke chapter 23. Beautiful, beautiful short story. It says this, Luke 23, verse 38. It says, an inscription, so Jesus is on the cross now, and he is crucified, and there is two thieves uh, next to Jesus. And it says this, an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were with Jesus, they blasphemed him saying, hey, if you're the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God seeing you are under the same condemnation? But we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Listen to verse 42. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let's talk about this for a second. So this, this thief on the cross, he's guilty literally. He's being punished for what he's guilty of. He turns to the holy Jesus. And he says, Above you, there's, you are the king of the Jews. Hey, uh, a king has a kingdom. Well, a king in his kingdom, he can, he can do whatever he wants. A king can pardon someone. I wonder if he would pardon me. No, I've, I've done too much. I'm guilty. I mean, what do I really have to offer Jesus? I mean, I mean, look at me. I've done wrong. I've lived wrong. I'm being punished for what I've done. Why would Jesus remember someone, someone like me? So he says, hey, Jesus, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, Jesus says, ah, yeah, uh, my kingdom is not filled with people like like you. I mean, you've not been to church. You know, you've not been baptized. You've not read your Bible through in a year. I mean, 
you know, yeah, you're not really, you're not really worthy. So you know what? When you die, spend a few millennia in purgatory, and then you know we'll think about it. Is that what the scripture said? No. Jesus says, "This day, this day." And it says, "This day, you're going to be with what? With me." You're like, wait a minute. This guy's a criminal. And he's going to be with you and, 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 and paradise? <laughs> but you've not gone to church. <laughs> you've not lived a great life. Jesus says today, I will be with you. Family, what would make a holy person like Jesus even care about a common criminal? That's just the love of God. It doesn't need to make sense to me. Because <laughs> you and I would, would say, well, if you, if you even tried to live a good life, just maybe, this criminal's guilty. And Jesus says, hey, when this is all done, glory, glory is waiting for you. You're going to be with me. How do we know this? Romans chapter 10, verse 13 it says, whoever, I love when the Bible says, whoever, anybody but God, it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means you, 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 no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, and, and to be careful of, 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 of letting your past become an idol for you. Well, I've done all of these things, and I've done this, and I've done this, and I've hooked on this, and I've spent some time... Well, we don't care about any of that. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Don't let where you've been stop you from what God, where God wants to take you. He wants to forgive you of where you've been. So get over all of that and be like this criminal. You say, hey, what do you learn at church today? I should be like a criminal. <laughs> Call out to Jesus and he'll save you. He'll save you. He'll, he'll deliver you. He'll give you hope. And you know there's not one person in here that wouldn't want to leave here with hope. There's not one of us to say, well, no, I'm good on hope. <laughs> you are laying in your bed at night. Things aren't going so well for you. You're thinking about all kinds of things, your failures, your friends, your future. And maybe it doesn't look as, as, as bright as you want. You find yourself disappointed a lot. Just maybe, friend, you're, you're putting your hope in something that's temporal. Put your hope and faith in Jesus. That's eternal and that's joy. It's biblical truth to know whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me leave you with this. The Savior in the manger is adored. The Savior on the cross is despised. The Savior in the manger is welcomed. The Savior on the cross is cursed. The Savior in the manger is looked upon with wonder. The Savior on the cross is, is mocked. The Savior in the manger is worshipped with gifts. The Savior on the cross was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. The Savior in the manger was celebrated by the host of heaven. The Savior on the cross was forsaken. The Savior in the manger was swaddled with cloths. The Savior on the cross was naked and shamed. The Savior was alive in the manger. The Savior on the cross was dying in pain. The Savior's death on the cross was, was silent. No heavenly host singing, no praising, no joy filled the air, just, just a holy silence when Jesus died. But the story doesn't end there. Glory to God. They put this dead savior in a tomb. And the third day, something pretty miraculous happened where Jesus started to <sighs> roll the stone away, defeating death, conquering sin, ascended to the Father, and is currently making intercession for you and I. You see, a dead savior doesn't save anybody, but a savior who has risen from the dead. Who? He can save anybody. He can save anybody. Because he saved you. He saved you. He saved you. He saved me. And Lord willing, if you're here today, friend, 
He wants to save you. What are you willing to do with Jesus? That's the million dollar question. Let me give you a few things to take home with you. If you're new with us, we have some take home uh, points. And these points are uh, meant to cause you to think about what you've heard today. And if you don't get a chance to write them down, they're already online for you. Uh, the first one is this, for you to think about. Talk about with your lovely or your friends or your family. The first one is, uh, if the truth benefits you in every way, why reject Jesus? If the truth benefits you in every way, why, why would you reject Jesus? Uh, secondly, if truth is important to you, are you selective with it? You want people to tell you the truth and not lie to you. But when God tells us the truth, what do you and I tend to do with that? Thirdly, since the truth sets free, are there any areas in your life where you're not free? Since truth sets free, are there any areas in your life that you are not free? And then lastly, are you rejecting truth so you can live life your way? Jesus, we, we love you because you first loved us. Jesus, how beautiful and wonderful and glorious you are. And you are well aware of the many voices and the many uh, temptations and uh, living in this world, how it's uh, many parts are so alluring to us. You know that we pursue these things hoping that we'll find some joy. And sometime down that road of pursuit, we... We come to the understanding of what Solomon said. It's like a chasing after the wind. Jesus, thank you for revealing yourself to, to all of us, to those that are inside, those who are in the overflow, those who are outside, and those who are online. Jesus, you know everything about us. And you still went to a cross. You know our deepest, darkest sins. And still yet, you love us. Just like the father, when he saw the son was still a great way off, he ran to him. How glorious are you, Jesus, that you love us so very much. Friend, this is, this is the time for you. This is the time for you to, to turn your, 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 your focus, your passions, your life, turn them to Jesus. Turn them, give them all over to Jesus. Follow Jesus, friend. Following Jesus won't make you religious. Glory to God. But following Jesus will transform your life. And he is the one that does the transforming. He does the one He's the one that, that, that does the, the, the changing, the pruning. You come to Jesus, and I'll tell you this. The Bible says you'll be what's called a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You come to Jesus. He'll forgive you. He'll save you. He'll deliver you. And then when it comes time for you to die, and all of us have that appointment, Jesus will receive you. Have you thought about what happens the moment after you die? If not, think about it right now. We're not promised tomorrow. All we have is now. So I want to encourage you. If I could say I want to beg you, receive Jesus because he is the joy your life is missing. Not religion, but a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus. And if you would like Jesus to save you, you must turn from your sin. The Bible says all have sinned. So you are in some really good company. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. All of us have. The Bible says if we believe that Jesus died on a cross for our sins and rose again the third day, we shall be saved. So we need to turn from our sins and turn towards Jesus. And he saves us. This is the truth. Not my truth, 
God's truth. So what are you willing to do with the truth you've just heard? If you desire to have Jesus save you, let you and I say a small prayer. The prayer is not going to save you, but Jesus will. Whomever calls upon the name of the Lord, that could be you today, friend. Whether you're inside, outside, on the overflow or online, say this prayer with me. Father in heaven, forgive me a sinner. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross for my sins and you rose again the third day. Remember me. Come and deliver me. For I believe. Be my savior. Make my life brand new. I commit my life to you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. And if you said that, friend, hey, welcome to the family of God where you are this new creation in Jesus. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Go to a Bible-believing church. God will lead you here, amen. Go to Bible-believing church. Read your Bible, pray, and have some fellowship with people who, who believe. And if you're, in, if you're online, click the link that says, I just gave my life to Jesus. We want to reach out to you, encourage you. And if you're in here, let somebody know, hey, I just gave my life to Jesus. We want to we wanna rejoice with you. And then, Father, for those of us that, that know you and been walking with you for a little while, may we continually love truth because it's you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to no longer be selective with truth but may we proclaim and receive your truth. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good. Thank you for allowing us to be here for a couple of minutes to talk about your goodness and your mercy. And Lord, I want to say a special prayer for the young people. Jesus, we pray for revival for them, that they would be courageous, that you would so fill them with your spirit, that your, your spirit is just oozing out of them, Lord, that going to walk different and think different, that they're not going to be ashamed of the gospel because it's the power to save. Oh Lord, set a fire with our youth. May they hunger and thirst after your word. Do a great work. Your word says that we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. So we know You've heard that prayer that the young people, one generation shall declare your mighty works to another generation. So Lord, may they walk in faith and do great things for your kingdom as they trust in you. And help mom and dad to stoke that fire. Help mom and dad to encourage walking by faith. Give mom and dad some, uh, some, some strength from the spirit to fan into flame the fire that's in their kids' lives or their grandkids' lives. Lord, thank you for being so good. We ask these things in Jesus' name. The church said, amen, amen and amen.